And just to show that I did get that one, there you go. Hello everybody, welcome back to another one. I'm really disappointed because look, I even brought my GoPro in today and I think I've left it on all night at home and the battery has just drained flat. So it ain't turning on, so we're back to the phone today. So as you can see behind me, so light's gonna be terrible, so I'll have to use my little flashlight. So today we're changing this little beastie. As you can see, the client is, this is a, quite a project for him. He's kindly stripped out all this plasterboard so I can see all these cables running this way and this way. So what we're gonna do is actually relocate the consumer unit up in this top corner. So that I'm just gonna um, relocate and fix onto here for now. Um, we've got to upgrade the bonding to the gas and the water, I believe. I think the water, I can't remember actually, I've been here ages ago. But anyway, we're moving this. That sick, that old cable there is coming out, that does an old shower, he's getting rid of it, so I'm just going to disconnect, he's going to strip it out. And we're going to move this to here, yeah. And um, So this is one of the ones where I've come in, did a quote, but he knows I'm doing like an EICR as I go. Um, and because this is like an ongoing project, I can't really give it a satisfactory or an unsatisfactory because he's going to be changing socket fronts. He's not physically doing any wiring. Um, so I'm happy to come in and um, I've told him to, he can call me back and I'll do all the testing. Um, at the end, I'm going to do all the testing today as in checking the cables, but as in far as accessories, like it's just like there's, the, you know, like the twisted, pendants and stuff which don't really comply because it's single insulated cables and um, look it's it's really badly frayed and burnt and stuff so I can't really give that a rate in because he's going to be changing it so I'll actually come back and finish the testing once he's finished doing the sockets etc but he knows I'm going to come back um, give him a price for that so um, so basically we're doing the board today we're going to do a full test on all of the cabling uh, fixed cabling but accessories I'm not really checking because um, He's going to be changing them, so hope you get the picture on that one. So as always, now we're going for the Hagar 10-way uh, consumer unit with a SPD. Um, he's only got six ways here, so I'm going to give him four spares. Right, off comes the cover. As you can see, it's an old crab tree. Um, some sort of makeshift gland there. <laughs> that might make a good picture, actually. Yeah, so luckily we are stripping this old shower out. Um, yeah, apart from that, everything uh, looks as expected. Um, I think the tails come in through the back. I don't want to poke around too much. Um, I'm going to go outside and see what we got out there. Right, so we got a PME system, 60 amp fuse allegedly in here. So we're going to take that out, uh, replace that back in there quickly. Right, so we have got a 60 amp fuse. Um, remove the fuse from the carrier and I had some comments in the last one, why'd you put this back in? Because that's still live and you don't want anyone poking about. So if you just put the carrier back in, then there's no way of you getting fingers or stuff in there. So we're going to upgrade these tails, they're only 16mm and the earth is only a 6mm. So we're going to put some 25mm tails in and a 16mm bond, uh, main bond. This is the gas, so we are going to replace in this 6mm with a 10mm. As you can see this has been highly effective uh, in its day. Right, so that's that gas meter, I've just ripped that cable out of the wall, I'll have to refeed that um, somehow. Probably come down and then drill out somehow um, this is all going to be disconnected I can now um, just get on strip this out do a bit of testing um, end to ends I think there's only one ring this is dead now so I can have a poke so this is dead now so I can have a poke about that is what is that 30 amp cooker which is a 10 mil by the looks of it yeah that's a 10 mil I've um, got one ring by the looks of it uh, two rings, potentially. Uh, God knows what that is. That's that shower that's coming out. 
lighting circuit and then something just in a connector. So I've got a bit of sorting out to do first. Okay, so it's coming back to me now. Um, the water is located here and as you can see it's a black old plastic farmer's pipe type thing that they used to use around these areas. That's the stopcock so I'm happy that that does not need a water bond because there's no copper pipes um, associated with the water that dive back into this concrete floor so I'm happy that that doesn't need a water bond and I would also label the board up as um, incoming water main plastic. Right, board has gone. There's the old 16 mil tails that I'm going to rip out. And the only way I'm going to be able to get these new ones in is put them, these are in the cavity. Um, a lot of people won't like that, but 99% of the houses in the UK, the tails are in the cavity. So I'm going to have to pull the new ones up out here along, and then they're going to have to drop into the new consumer that's going there. Um, that's the cable that was in a connector, which I'm going to go and trace that out in a minute. Looks like it goes up to the old boiler or tank or something. And then these cables are all out here. So they're all here. I'm going to do lots of testing here now. Um, and then I'll pull them back, pull them back that way. And then they can just go into the top of the board there. I just managed to make head and tail of what someone sort of penciled into the front of the old lid there. So it's cooker, sockets up, kitchen, question mark, shower. That's now gone. Down lights, up lights. So as you can see, you've literally got five circuits to test here. So it's not going to take very long, to be honest. So all I've got at the minute is a, I'll use this old bonding cable as a draw wire which literally drops down the wall. Uh, it comes to here, I'm just going to draw this up now, um, the new tails, 25mm and a 16mm earth. Wish me luck, eh? You try it one-handed? Yeah, let's give it a go. Real world stuff, innit? See in a minute. <laughs> so they're a three meter tail kit, and as you can see, that's what we've got left. Um, comes caught the way down this wall, so literally going to go through that timber cross and then drop in um, the one entry into the top of the board. It's going to be straight up to this plasterboard. Uh, what's this? Yeah, we're getting a new one of them. There you go, disconnected. I'm going to leave a little tiny gap so we can slide some plasterboard. Um, when he redoes this ceiling. So the board's gonna be mounted roughly along this old plasterboard line here. So the way they put this meter in is crap, because look, it doesn't give you any room. They should have lengthened these tails up and then it would have given me more sweep, but I've had to do it like this. Um, I've cleated it in. Um, I've done it like this because I then I know I then can't pull this out and think I've got more length than I actually have. So it's cleated in, they're connected in. Um, I'm going to bring the, uh, the gas bond down this same hole and then it will go through this little hole here and just come out into there. Right, as you can see I've used some um, expanding foam, fire rated expanding foam. I've put a bit in there for because it was a big hole. I've also filled up this where the tails come in and that. So now I've got a um, new gas bond, new main 16mm earth bond and I've got my live and neutral tails that I'm now going to start um, prepping mounting this board. Right, if you want to, um, I'm just prepping this board. If you want to see a more, a little bit more in depth of me prepping this, check my last video out. It's sort of 29 minutes long, and I sort of go through the process of me dismantling this and glanding it. But basically, I'm going to just take out these um, internal guts, as they're called, a thin rail, undo these neutrals, put some fireproof glands in the top, and um, yeah, basically that's it. Okay, so again, I've installed the fireproof grommets. These are like intramissant ones. So I think someone was a little confused. Um, they said, oh, I've, I've knackered the integrity of the grommets. So basically, you just cut a little slit, put your cable through. And if there ever was a fire, it's going to start inside this consume unit. The flames are going to come up. And what these do is swell up and melt, and it creates a complete seal. So and because I'm mounting this board tight to the ceiling, um, there's no way that this board needs uh, you know, IP2X or IP4X, whatever it is, um, because you, you won't be able to get your finger in there anyway. Um, yeah, so it's tight up against the ceiling and you've got fire grommets that are going to expand in, in the event of a fire and create a complete seal in this consume unit. And just another one while we're here, obviously we're fitting metal consume units now, so the live neutral and earth main incomer needs to go through the same hole, okay? They're going to go through the same hole. Day's going good, board is up. Uh, mounted, glands it in, 
Cables are all pulled out. I've just literally got to drill some holes, um, three holes, four holes in this little beam here. Um, but is my day going to get bad because I'm just going to start testing my end to ends on the rings? Right, so I'm just um, starting to test these end to ends with my meter. So I'm just knowing my meter. Um, zero, 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 which is good. And then I've got my legs here, which are still marked up two and two. So let's see. We've got a ring. It's good. So what I'm going to do, rather than mess about with the iPad at the minute, is I have got... So I know number two was sockets up. So I'm literally going to do a live neutral on earth and then 0 0.20 on the lives. And then the neutrals you're looking at. Um, very, very similar readings, okay? One, two. Okay. 0 0.20. And then because the CPC is smaller, I think it's 1.67 times higher. So you're looking at 0 0.49 on that. So up sockets. Allegedly, we've got a ring main, okay, and then we're going to jump to the last one, which is the only other ring which it says kitchen question mark, so I'm guessing it's down. And again, when you hear that little click, that's a good day because you know that you've got a potential ring main. So 0 0.30, so as the reading has increased, you can see that the ring is slightly larger because the resistance has gone up, or you've got some loose joints somewhere, okay, so it's two of those things. Again, just go neutral to neutral and it's clicked. And that is 0 0.31. And then I'll do the CPCs last. And again, they should be higher. There we go, 0 0.73, 0 0.73. So that's slightly high um, because um, if you do the calculation, um, I can't do it because my phone's there, but 0 0.30 times 1.76 or 67, whatever it is, it's not 0 0.73, so potentially um, when I go around and check the sockets, I'm just going to tweak up all the connections, and then interestingly, I'll come back at the end of the day and we'll just check that reading, okay? So that's a little bit, and all you can see is I've just recorded those like that. Um, these don't need um, end to ends because they're just radials as such but obviously we've got to do our R1 R2s and then we're going to go ahead and do our, all our insulation resistance on this and if you're ever confused if you're ever confused with a multimeter um, multimeter um, uh, blah, 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 multifunctional tester you can see the buttons actually correspond in um, you know the, the ways you should be testing so you're doing your continuities and your r1 r2s then you're going on to your insulation resistance then you're going to your loop test and you know round to here round to here round to here so it's pretty simple they've made it quite easy to be honest the whole process but basically i'm just going to work my way through my list now starting with the cooker circuit um, i'm going to go around and do my r1 r2 so i've got these little leads make life a hell of a lot easier so literally link out your your live and cpc and then go if you've got a socket on the front of it, great. Um, if not, take the cooker uh, plate off and just uh, go between the live and CPC and that'll give you a reading. Uh, reading in ohms between the, um, basically you know you've, you've got a loop, you've got an earth loop path and it's good. Um, and then if you want to do the neutral as well, um, check in your RN, okay? As I'll bring you with me, we'll do a little bit of testing in this video. So. What some people just do is, is test it here, but what I like to do is take it off here as well. I can physically check the connections. What we'll do, we'll do a test. So you want that on, because that's going to bring the supply down to here. Obviously it's off. So this is older than some of you lads out there watching this video. Eh? So we take this off, so you can see it's nice and clean. Um, get your uh, gloves and bleach out for this. So we'll have this off and then come back to you. Okay, so it just shows, I think, that they've had a gas um, oven in here for a while because I've just, Look how crispy this um, how crispy this tape is, and that was just like that in the back of the box. Look, so what I will do is I'm going to do some readings here now. 
So because we've got that loop at the consumer unit on our cables, um, let me just do this one sec. Um, because we've got our loop at the consumer unit between the CPC and the live, once I put my te uh, test probes on there and there, we should get a reading. 0 0.11. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just going to check the connections up there and we'll see if we can get that a little bit better. But that is, that's a really good reading. So be back in a second. Right, so I've just tweaked up the connections up in the... Um, a switch there so now we're just going to check what we got now so we had 0.11 and it's now 0 0.10 okay I don't know if you can see that but it's come down 0 0.01 so not a great difference so that was actually a really good electrically sound circuit and the reason that was because no one is bloody mess of it so I know that's existing and that's existing since this house was built no one's pratted around with it, tried to put a new kitchen in here, mess about with it, extend this. So the guy who, who did this originally done a really good job, okay? Um, what I will suggest is that when I'm doing this, I'll replace all these green sleeves for new sleeving, but at the minute, I'm gonna leave it because like I said to you, the guy's probably gonna change this and I've got to come back and retest. So I'm doing an initial sort of verification, even though this is a, not a new build, it's an EICR. I'm checking what's here and then I'm gonna check what he's done when he changed all the face plates and stuff. He knows that he's going to pay me to come back and do it. And then if you want to, you can go and um, switch your cable around at the board end. So you'll be going between the CPC and the neutral that come here and measure it and just make sure you've got the, um, the same reading pretty much because it should be exactly the same length of cable. OK, so all I'm, I'm done with this is screw that back, put that in some connectors. I'll put the cover plate back on and I'll tell the client he needs a new cooker outlet switch and, and he's going to change this anyway. So I'm not bothered. Right, just a quick update. I've done my figure of eight on my um, ring circuit upstairs. So basically I've looped together, um, so let's just call it the red and the green on this one and the red and the green on this one with my little test leads there. I'm literally just gonna go around now. I've got a socket a socket adapter, which you can plug your leads into. I'm just gonna go around to each socket now, check the readings. If there's any abnormal ones, I'm gonna take the socket off and check it, because um, it could be a radial, um, it could be a spur. Um, it could have really bad connections, so this will tell you a lot. And then basically also when you're going around, remember how many sockets, and just record on here how many sockets are on each circuit, and I like to just put that there. So as you can see, points on the cooker is literally one point. No, it's uh, one. And then I'm going to go around now and just do sockets up, sockets down, showers gone, so we can scrub that out, down lights and up lights, so you can have a quick count up as well. Okay, and as you're doing this, it also gives you a good opportunity to go round and unplug any appliances. Um, so I'm not getting nothing on these sockets, which is not worrying. It's just it means that it's not as it's labelled. So that one was good. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so we've got a reading here. So we know this, this um, socket is on the upstairs ring, if you like. Um, again, none of these have got anything plugged in. And again, I think the client is changing these for doubles. So again, I'm just checking the physical wiring today, not really checking the condition of the sockets. Um, and that's it. So literally one, two, three. Three sockets on a ring main, which is pretty pointless, eh? Right, so ignore what I said about this circuit only having three sockets on it. It's got eight because it's wired as I as I actually suspected when I went round and couldn't get a reading on some sockets. It's actually wired front to back of the house. That's how they used to do it in the olden days. Rather than up and down, it was front and back. Um, yeah, so that's fine. So we've got eight and seven, so they're very, very well balanced. Um, you've got only three in the kitchen, which is fine. So now all I've got to do is do some O and R2 readings on the down lights, then I can actually go around and plug all the loads, lamps, accessories, etc. Sockets are all clear now because I've done that, so it's literally just take some light bulbs out and uh, do some insulation resistance testing. And just remember to go between the neutrals on the separate lighting circuits just because you don't want um, any um, cross neutrals like I had on my last job, so I don't want any of that here. Even though this would be really easy to sort out because there's there's hardly any ceilings up to be fair.
Right, all of my um, R1R2's continuities have checked out, so I'm moving on to my insulation resistance. As you can see, I'm using a piggyback lead. Um, shout out to Gaz GSH Electrical, check his channel out. Um, he's on YouTube as well, um, so I can, I'm able to piggyback. I can use all three leads, and as you can see, I've got 456 mega ohms. So uh, that's fine, that won't cause any problems, but it would be good to see that clear. I've taken all the lamps out as well, so we'll go to the next lighting circuit now. Right, so I've just moved on to the next lighting circuit, as you can see, slowly, slowly climbing. Um, it's over 500 mega ohms, so I'm not worried. Okay, so oven, oven circuit, uh, it's completely fine, completely clear. And I've skipped one, but we're just doing a ring main, uh, ring final circuit, shall I say. It's climbing up 800 mega ohms. So, yeah, it's perfectly fine. That's not going to cause any trouble whatsoever. Right, so time is um, time is cracking on now. Obviously, I'm trying to film and do bits for you. Some guy did say, "Wow, you've got so many adverts on your video. Can I have some more adverts taking the sort of the the micro if you like?" Um, that's the only way that really pays for me to produce the videos is to put adverts on my videos. So I'm sorry that I have to do it, but I have to cover my time somehow. Otherwise, I literally physically cannot do the videos for you. So if you want the videos, unfortunately. You've got to have adverts on the video. So I'm going to put you on a time lapse now and um, crack on with this board. That. So there we go. So new boards in. Um, the only thing I don't like about these Hagar's is this. This is setup. General setup here. They they put all this here. Yet you need to bring your tails in there. Um, hey ho. So as you can see, we've got one ring and a lighting circuit on one RCD, and then we've got cooker, ring, and one lighting circuit. So it's perfectly balanced. And he's ended up with five spare ways. Um, so it's perfect for him because I know he's going to want to do some work down the line. So yeah. Nice and neat. Um, all I've got to do now is just cut down these buzz bars or bus bars or whatever you want to call them. Um, cables are all glanded in the top, as you can see there. The only one I did struggle with, I wish I'd have put a 25 in, um, is this one. It's perfectly shrouded round, but I'm just going to try and push that back down um, a little bit more. But yeah, I might even put a uh, SWA cleat on there and clip these. 
Okay, and just a quick one. Somebody was interested in knowing how to um, sort of cut the buzz bars. So what I've done is I mark with my pen, which what I need. And then with these ones, you've got, luckily you have got the, um, the indentation there. So you can literally get two pairs of pliers, like so, and do that, okay? There's one half of the board. And then the other half of the board is here. Two pairs of strong pliers. And break him off. And then all you've got to do is get your junior hacksaw and cut your uh, buzz bar, bus bar cover down. And last but not least, this is probably most important. I'm just gonna go through. So we've got MCB there, if you go along, um, single cable, multi cable, they're all the same. So the outgoing ways need to be torqued down to 2.8 newton meters. And I know if some of you like this noise, Mr. Bundy especially. He says, one, two, three, four. And then if you go and look at the Talk settings you can find um, the rest for the neutral bar, earth bar, buzz bar. I'm going to do that now. And just to show that I did get that one, there you go. Right, so we're all talked up, ready to go. Um, last thing I'm going to do is the, the gas is still disconnected um, outside at the gas meter, so I'm going to do my earth loom PSC here at the board, uh, write that down, then I'll connect the gas. Um, and then we're actually getting there, yeah, good. I was doing my R1R2s. Um, this socket was the highest. I believe it is a spur from upstairs. So it's back of house ring there and it's spurred down like they used to in the olden days. I've just done an earth loop on it. Just wait for that to process itself. Okay, um, and also I have done my RCD test at the board, but interesting, so we just do, um, what we do is a ramp test, yeah? So that means on this tester that it's gonna do a ramp test, so it's gonna show us what it actually will trip at. It's a 30 milliamp RCD, but they always trip lower. Uh, so we've got type A, quite interesting to see. There you go. 18 milliamps that that will trip at so if that's why you find if you've got like a lot of equipment especially computers with a lot of earth leakage um it, it will only take 18 milliamps of earth leakage to trip that rcd so that's why you need to um especially in computer rooms and stuff you you have three or four ring mains or radials um, on separate um, rcds to stop the nuisance tripping and just another quick thing while we're back at the board um as you can see we've got one 32 amp um, BTARD MCB, that's doing the kitchen sockets and the back of the house, then you've got a 6 amp lighting circuit. But what I did with this ring main is, because it's literally 7 general use sockets, I've derated it to a 16 amp ring main because um, if you used to calculate maximum demand, you would not exceed the 60 amp fuse, but if you, if you added all these up you would. So you've got to take um, a little bit of that into consideration. Um, there's no way that this is going to be pulling 60 amps, but um, it just, you know, it looks good, 16 amp ring main, that's perfectly acceptable. The board, um, I know a few of you love um, love this little touch. So, getting the right way, Chrissy boy. On there, on there, in there, and on there, there you go. So, auntie. Void if removed. So if you like that little touch, you can pick these stickers up. Any good uh, supermarket chain. <laughs> right, there we go. Gas bond comes in in uh, grommet. And it is there. Super duper. Another one bites the dust. Okay, and the last little finishing touch there, plastic mains, water pipe. So again, thanks for joining me on another job. Um, this one's gone as smooth, really. All I've got to do is wait for the client to come back. 
showing what's been going on um, and then maybe a, a week or two weeks I'll come back here after he's changed some accessories, do some final tests, as long as they're okay, I can then issue him um, a certificate. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. I appreciate it. Thumbs up and the thumbs down, so take care.